This is his first appearance with us on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome Tim Allen? Yeah. Hi there. Uh, thank you for having me. And nice to be here. I, I'm a Detroit native, and uh, I got... Which means I, uh, I like American cars. My favorite this year is the sedan Dam DeVille, that big front drive caddy. You know what it is. <laughs> aluminum horse, I'd say. Aluminum engine, 270 horse, front drive, leather guts, big damn sedan Dam DeVille, boy. That's a car. <laughs> they make them good in Detroit, but they don't care about ergonomics, easy reach. Pff, who cares, you know? <laughs> you want to touch that radio at full speed in a sedan DeVille, you better think about that move just a little bit. <laughs> Grandma drives that, not a 90s old, still driving. Not a good thing. Uh, I don't go with her. It'd be foolish, wouldn't it? You wouldn't even know Nana's in the car unless you look close. <laughs> what did Grandma drive out of that driveway or what? <laughs> Knuckles and a blue head. That's all you see. It's... I hate her. I really do. I hate her. <laughs> She's always bringing over casseroles no one ever eats. A major casserole? Ah, uh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Oysters and raisins. Great. Good idea. <laughs> It's from the old country. What'd you save it? What is that stuff? <laughs> See, that's my problem, actually. It's one of many. Uh, my background, I'm Irish and German, which means we're just thin, angry, hungry people. That's all we are. <laughs> oh, the great chefs of Ireland. There's a thick book for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Germans. There are some good cooks right there, huh? <laughs> they can't shove it in an animal casing. They won't eat it. That's all there is. <laughs> I've got the reason they were so warlike, these Nazi guys, huh? They weren't warlike, they're just hungry. They stood at the border of France and Italy going, what the hell are they cooking over there? My mother hated this attitude as well as she could. She called us pigs our lives. She said, men are pigs. Men are pigs, right? Yeah. yeah? Just too damn bad we own everything, isn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding, I kid, I kid. Women own a lot of stuff nowadays. Your potpourri outlets, yarn barns, that sort of stuff. Uh, this is why my mother called us pigs. You little pigs, Neanderthal, red-butted baboons. That's what you are. All you do is poop and eat. That's all you do. Don't you speak to me, you little pigs. <laughs> you should grunt like little animals you are. <laughs> That's how my mother figured men should talk. <laughs> What's easier, pass a turkey or point? Hey. <laughs> It's a simple but effective language. You're a little confused. Uh -huh. <laughs> now you understand. Oh, yeah. I want to see corporate grunting. Robert Stemple, the new head of GM, introduced in 1991s. <clears throat> hey. <laughs> My mother said men are only alive for three reasons. Lawn care, vehicle maintenance, and tools. Yeah. Oh. My tools. I walk into Sears Craftsman area, my nipples get rock hard. I swear. <laughs> One thing I can never understand is duct tape. You never leave a Sears without duct tape. 90 foot of Silver Grail, Permacell, US made cloth back duct tape. And nobody knows what this stuff's for. My motto is you can't fix it, duck it. That's it. But why are men so into tools? I'll tell you why right this minute. Shop class. They made us go to shop class. The industrial education teacher kicked out of the Marines for a bad attitude. That guy, huh? Pete Bartholomew's overcoat, all that stuff. Why do you listen to shop teachers? Half of them are missing fingers. Am I wrong? <laughs> hey, boys, watch that uh, saber so I'll kick back on you. I'm not kidding there. I'm not kidding around. I'll tell you that right now. We passed out those test papers. There you go. Thank you all very much. I'm Tim Allen. That's funny. You see, I told you it was easy. Ah, well, glad you told me. Funny thing, we're going to take a break. We're coming right back with Tim. Say where you are. Uh, what's happening with Tim Allen? Let me tell you. Let me tell him what you told me before the show, because it's kind of interesting. Everybody thinks because somebody's a performer, they never get nervous. Uh -huh. He came up before the show and he said, "I'm nervous." And I said, "Why?" He said, "Well, they got me on a different schedule now. You've done stand-up for a long time." 
But now you're doing the sitcom. It changes the whole rhythm, doesn't it? Jeez, no kidding. I, I, I was telling you, I went back. We did a concert in Arizona, and I actually was asking my my manager. I said, how did I segue from women into uh, dog poo or whatever it was I was talking about? <laughs> I couldn't even remember. He's going, oh, I don't remember. You, you're the you're the pro here. And I, I, I they're all dilly down around the yeah. Biltmore Hotel. And I'm going, well, how did you get to that? I I can, I Why wasn't to worry about tonight? That's stuff, marvelous stuff. Well, thanks very much. And congratulations on the first one. Yeah, oh yeah. And congratulations on your show. One in the top ten is about the only new show that's come out this season that is getting big numbers. It, it's new for me because I said it's basically because the, the the crew that Matt Williams is producing, yeah. the, the directors, this John Pasquin, this John Pasquin is going to kill me. But these, there are people that I don't know. I'm an, I'm not really an actor. I just play one on TV. That's why <laughs> that's why I tell them everything because I'm worth. Patricia Richardson is my wife. All these people are really they're actors. And and one one time Patricia's looking at me in a scene and she started crying. And I go, stop the tape. Uh, she, something's wrong with her. And she's going, Tim, I'm acting right now. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Acting, acting. That's what you're doing. I thought something was wrong. I'm... No, I think comedians generally, and I don't say this because I, I, I do comedy, I think most comedians are not bad actors because what you do is a comedian, you react to things. Right. You react to situations, you know, and that's basically what it is. Sometimes it's difficult because I'll go for the joke, and they'll tell me right. that, Tim, you just wait, you're just, you're just biding your time to get to the stupid joke. And I said, I am, because it was a stupid joke. <laughs> you want you want to get to the punchline. I want to get to the punchline, and sometimes through dialogue, I, I lose I lose control because I'm not an actor. I just play one. I'm on just television. playing one on TV. <laughs> now you do a home improvement show on the television, then around the house, you're not exactly uh, Mr. Handy. That's not. Written how are you? No. How are you normally? Well, forget the show. I mean, how are you normally? Normally, I'm all right. What? what, you, what? You, met, you talked about duct tape. Probably one of the greatest inventions of all time. I don't know why. Well, but it's it like Velcro. Everything. It's like Velcro. Yeah, it's, Those two things alone. Well, it's duct. Tape, as duct I found it, it's like duct tape, like barbed. It's like I always thought it was barbed wire, like Joan and barbed wire. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> barbed wire. Barbed. And on the show once, it was duct tape. We, duct, we just, duct tape. Tape. You can do everything with it. Anything. My my wife is is quite intelligent. Sometimes we'll get into these arguments. Like it, it, I go, you, she forgot to put oil in the automobile. The oil. I said, honey, how long has the oil light been on? Well, a couple days. <laughs> what, didn't you think it was a buzzer? She goes. I thought if it was a, it was a warning, it should have a little speaker or something. Put oil in here. So we get these constant arguments about men's roles and women, women's roles. Right. And one time I tried to vacuum a man's way, you know, and no matter what I did, you know, I had a tool belt, I had the crevice tools in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, the women's vacuums, they don't pick up anything. The same bobby pin. <laughs> and then you know, what do you do? You reach down, you pick it up, look at it, put it back I'm down. To I want to show that sucker's got power. Well, so what I figured is I got more power in this thing. I got sure. an old Chevy V6 out of the garage. And I put it on that back. That'll suck the eyes out of the parrot now. And then even women, they don't even care. She comes in, sees I've done the vacuum, and she goes, well, where are the vacuum tracks? Uh huh? Because that shows it was clean. Goes, well, I covered also the Indians wouldn't follow me to the kitchen, honey. That's the kind of... She wants to see the ruler tracks. Yeah, she wants to see him dusting. I don't understand it. All you got to do is move a thing. If you lift up a little device underneath the thing, there's no dust. That's right. Why move everything? <laughs> Just duct tape the small articles down, fire up a leaf blower. Oh. Now, are you a car nut, too? I... Car nut? Big car nut. Yeah. The biggest thrill I've had since this, this hoopla over what I'm doing, the Chrysler folks called me up and said, would you drive a new Dodge Viper? Yeah. Through LA, they got, they asked, uh, Jay Leno, Leno, I think it's Leno. Leno. Yeah. Hey, Len no, Leno, 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 G Leno. Anyway, they asked Jay Leno, and I ended up driving around with Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> Who has this fancy dance restaurant here? Right. He's the nicest guy. Car guys all relate at the same, at the right. same level. No matter what they do, that's how men say, how do you do? You know, instead of saying nice suit, you say, geez, as a matter of fact, you do have nice wheels on your car. Right. Which yeah. is my way of saying, well, your eyes are clear today. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And I got to drive this Dodge Viper around uh, uh, Los Angeles. So this is the wildest car. And to be to drive it around and have people in Mercedes and uh, Lamborghinis pull up and go, what the heck is that? This is Dodge. They went, isn't that company out of business? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was a fabulous experience. Car-oriented. Oh, love yeah. cars. We have to take a break. We're coming back. <laughs> We were talking about duct tape, right? You know what I use instead of a tie tack? Duct tape. A little two-way 
piece of... Well, that's double that's stack. All. That's carpet tape, and John. You put it on that. That's, no, that's carpet tape. That's carpet tape. Double carpet tape, and it's a great idea to uh, keep yeah. your shirt down. Okay. Keep your tie down. <laughs> you know all of that stuff, don't you? I am, I'm into this hook and needle. Hook and needle? Yeah. <laughs> I make this stuff up as I go along. I don't know. Are, you, are you more male or male show? What do you think of the femi- how feminism going on? Well, somebody said it was almost dead. People go, no, off. no. <laughs> That's Johnny Carson, the care of NBC. <laughs> I, I, I view myself, I grew up with seven boys and two girls, and I view myself as a masculinist. Masculinist? I'm just into men things, you know. Uh, gunk, gasket sealer, lava, soap on a rope, WD-40. <laughs> Bass fishing, blowing your nose like this. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> Very male over here. that male thing? Hey, a garage with a drain in it? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Just men, only a man with a, a garage with a drain? Yeah, I'd like one of those, honey. And why? I put hubcaps. I have a John Deere 160. Oh, that's, that's a dream come true. Oh, you uh, got to know it. That's got a tiller on the back of it. Hey. I got headlights in case I want to mow that thing at night, you know. Uh, <laughs> I put hubcaps on a tractor. I didn't think my, my wife would notice. She was 122 bucks well spent to a man. <laughs> I come home and she's going, did you put hubcaps on the tractor? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess I did. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Men accessorize different, you know. Yeah. Chrome wheels to a man, got to add them car. Right. A woman, it's a fur coat. Fur coat to some women. She wants to get a fur coat. She figures she'd do a Doris Day, I'm naked underneath thing, you know, I come home, you know, and she goes, that's him. <clears throat> I'm a man, I go, where'd you get that coat? <laughs> like, like she's gonna buy me a Ferrari if I drive a buck naked in there. Honey, look at that, huh? <laughs> Why don't you shift that stick, huh? <laughs> I can manually. <laughs> the hardware stores must die to see you coming. If you go into those big departments, I mean, hardware stores. I did a, I did, when I first got the ABC or Disney and ABC picked me up, I right. mean, it was just so weird to have all this action to meet all these, these uppy ups at Disney that are, they're very nice men. Right. Uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg and Michael Eisner. Yeah. Right. Personal friends of mine. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey and, uh, you know, the Mike Eister, you know, and, uh, they said I got the show. I'm back in Michigan where I live and, uh, and I, they said, do you buy, I live here. <laughs> That's Michigan. He always says, yeah, Michigan. I wonder what Florida would look like. Never mind. You know, so... Don't you dare. <laughs> we have to leave. We have to leave. Don't get in. Save it for the next time, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Good night.